All right, so here we're doing some selected problems from chapter seven. Uh, we're gonna start with number 40. So number 40 is a really straightforward problem. Um, it gives you the frequency of some electromagnetic radiation and asks for the wavelength. So uh, the equation we're gonna use is this one. And we're given a frequency of 100.2 megahertz, which we need to be in hertz. So then we'll just times 10 to the sixth that to be in regular hertz. And then just plug it into the equation. The speed of light. It's hard to see with the pen, but y'all should be able to know what the speed of light is at this point. And then divide by, again, I know this is not in scientific notation, but it just makes it easier. Meters per second, inverse seconds, and you'll get about 2.99 meters out of that. All right, the next one we're gonna do is number 42. Also pretty straightforward. Uh, number 42 just asks you to calculate the energy of the photon um, indicated in number 40. So we did A, by the way, there. So we'll just do A here. Um, we're going to use this equation. Energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency. And remember Planck's constant is 6.626 .626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. And we already discussed our frequency above. We, of course, need to change that, which we already did. So let's just plug it in. E equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times 100.2 times 10 to the sixth. And you do all that math out and you will get 6.639 times 10 to the negative, that's a negative 26 joules. So I'll rewrite it here. Nine times 10 to the negative 26 joules. All right, next up is number 46. Number 46 is how much energy is contained in one mole of each. So we're probably using Avogadro's number here. I'm just going to go out on a limb. And I'm going to do A. And it says one mole of X-ray photons with a wavelength of 0.135 nanometers. So we know that our wavelength is 0.135 nanometers. And that's really all we need to know. The other business is just words. So we're going to use this equation. And H is a, a constant. C is a constant. We've identified them both previously. C is, of course, speed of light. Um, and the wavelength, again, this needs to be in meters. So the only thing I'm going to do is change this to meters. And again, I'm not keeping it in scientific notation, but that's fine. So a nanometer is a neg to the negative ninth meter. So we'll just do that. Um, I have the full confidence that you can plug this number into there, your H in and your C in. And if you do it correctly, you should get an answer of 1.472 times 10 to the negative 15. And that is joules, and that is per photon. But we don't want one pho or photon, or in this case, I guess it's not photon, it's, uh, yeah, extra photons. So we want a mole, really easy. 1.472 times 10 to the negative 15th. We just need to multiply that by Avogadro's number. Because remember, this is joules in one 
photon. We want joules in a whole bunch of photons, right? In a mole of photons. Remember, a mole is just a, a number of, like saying a dozen. Except instead of saying 12, you're saying a really big number, right? So 6.022 times 10 to the 23 photons is one mole of photons. So then if you do that math out, you get 8.867 times 10 to the 8th joules per mole and if you want to be fancy usually um, these things are, are represented in kilojoules per mole so just take off a few a few uh, zeros there 8.867 times 10 to the negative nope to the positive ignore that to the fifth the positive fifth kilojoules per mole all right Next up here is number 48. 48 is kind of a conceptual question. It says, what happens to the interference pattern described in 47, which you should know what an interference pattern looks like at this point. If the electrons going through the slit, slits, I guess, is decreased to one electron per hour. So as long as you're not observing it, and as long as you're still using small, small particles, the same thing will happen you'll get the same exact pattern. It'll just take longer to develop. Um, and the second part says, what happens if we try to determine which slit it goes through by placing a laser? Well, if you're trying to determine it, then um, it, it's gonna be sneaky snake on you and there will be no pattern. So the first half, same pattern, just will take a while to develop. Second half, um, there will not be a pattern because it doesn't like it when you try to watch it. 50. Number 50 asks you to calculate the de Broglie wavelength. All right, it's easy enough. Um, the de Broglie wavelength formula is that the wavelength equals Planck's constant divided by mass times velocity. And this is velocity, not frequency. That's a mistake I see made all the time. I try to kind of differentiate between the two, but it's hard. Um, and keep in mind, remember, we, we've identified Planck's constant earlier. Remember, Planck's constant is one of the smallest numbers you'll ever work with. Maybe the smallest number you'll ever work with. So if you think about that being in the numerator, usually wavelengths should be super, super, super tiny. If you have a to the negative 34th uh, numerator, and you're getting a big wavelength, you probably did something wrong unless these numbers are massively tiny as well. All right, so let's, let's bust this out. Um, we're told that we have a hydrogen atom and we're told that this hydrogen atom is moving at a velocity of 475 meters per second. So the first thing we need to do is, is get this M really the only hard part here is getting the M. So we need the mass in kilograms because we're dealing with joules. Remember a joule is a kilogram meter per second. So we're dealing with joules, so we need kilograms of one atom. Well, we know that there's 1.0079 grams of hydrogen in one mole, because that's the mass on the periodic table tells you. So we're going to use that Avogadro's number again. Remember, one mole is Avogadro's number. And then after that, um, we're, we'll do a quick conversion from grams to kilograms. There are a thousand grams in one kilogram. Hopefully that's not new information for you. And so when you bust that out, you will get 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27, that's a seven, I promise, kilograms. All right, now we just plug this in. All right, our wavelength is gonna equal Planck's constant 
6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds over a mass of 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27. And you probably can't read this very well, so luckily I'm saying it all out loud for you. Times the speed, which is four velocity, I apologize, which is 475 meters per second. And that's going to give you an answer, just pretend that says equals, of 8.338 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. Um, and usually, um, in, in this situation, it may be asking for picometers. So uh, a picometer is a 10 to the negative 12. So if you convert it, then you'll get 800. And 34 picometers, which obviously is a much nicer number to look at. Next up is number 54. Number 54 is, is a de Broglie wavelength problem again, except we're talking about um, a bullet. So if we have a 27 gram bullet fired at 765 meters per second, calculate the de Broglie wavelength. Easy enough. Um, so, all right, it's well, the wavelength is. I'm just going to write H because I think at this point you know what that is. Remember, we need to be in kilograms. So, 0 0.027765. And you will get a phenomenally small number 3.2 times 10 to the negative 35. So the question is, does that have anything to do with the properties of the bullet? Um, no, that is so small it may as well be zero. It's smaller than Planck's constant. All right, may as well be zero when we're talking about a 27 gram bullet and, and you know the real world visible world of physics. Next up is number 60. Number 60 says, what are the possible values for m sub l for each value of l? Well, remember that m sub l is greater than or equal to negative l and less than or equal to positive l. Those are l's, not ones. Maybe if I make them a little l-y, right? So I just did um, c, because why not? it tells you L is equal to 2. So that means M sub L is equal to negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Super simple. 62 says which combinations of N and L represent real orbitals in which do not exist. So the way to do this is the S's start at 1, the P's start at 2, the D's start at 3, and the F's start at 4. So you can't have a principal quantum number, basically, is what this is, right? Principal quantum number. You can't have a, a principal quantum number for P less than 2, for D less than 3, or for F less than 4. I'm not going to do this problem for you because I think it's really simple and you should be able to figure it out on your own. Um, but if you have any problems, let me know um, and we can talk about it. All right, next up is 66. 66 says, determine whether each transition in the hydrogen atom corresponds to absorption or emission. Remember, um, if you go up, you had to absorb energy. And if you go down, you had to emit it. That makes, that makes good sense, right? So again, I'm not going to do them all for you, but if your number gets smaller, you've gone down and emitted energy. If your number gets bigger, you've gone up and absorbed it. 
Number 70, it gives you um, transitions within the hydrogen atom and asks you to calculate the frequency of light emitted. So the first thing you need to do is calculate the energy and then from energy you can calculate um, frequency. So the equation I like to use there is really just a combination of the, the equation that's in your book. But I like to say negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 times the inverse of the square of the final state minus the inverse of the square of the initial state. And so now we can just plug this all in. So um, I'm going to do number A, my favorite number. So your delta E equals negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 times. And it said you went from uh, 70A says you go from 4 to 3. So you end at 3 and you begin at 4. So if you do all this math, you end up with negative 1.0597 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. All right, well it asks for frequency. So we can go back to this equation and rearrange, so frequency equals energy over Planck's constant. Plug your energy into there, plug Planck's constant into there, and you will get 1.60 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Uh, you can't have a negative wavelength, so that negative just is kind of nil, but we understand um, that it is negative. All right, and the last one is number 105. Number 105, um, we kind of already addressed. It says determine whether an interference pattern is observed on the other side of the slit if, remember, if it's a tiny particle and you don't observe it, you get the interference pattern. If it's a bigger particle or you observe it going through the slit, you will not get one. So A says um, you, you shoot the beam one electron per minute, not observing it, still going to get the slit, it'll just be slower. Um, you place a light beam to determine which slit goes through, you're observing it, you will not observe the interference pattern.